Good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Paula Show. Tonight, I'd love to quote Nelson Mandela, who says, education is the most important weapon that can be used to transform the world. And tonight, we're speaking about education and how it might impact our social, our personal, and our economic development. And I have with me on set tonight, Mr. Juna Samuel. He's the former chairman of Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission. He was an educator in Antigua and Barbuda, and then he transferred his skills to the US, where he worked as an educator for many, many years. And Jamil Lee, a teacher or educator at the Antigua Grammar School, is on set as well. He's a pastor, and he's a youth advocate. Multiple skills on set here at the Paula Show tonight. And I have a beautiful audience here to show my people some love. It's a beautiful evening on the Paula Show. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, please. Mr. Samuel, I know you taught in Antigua for a very long time. When did your teaching career start? Oh, I began teaching more than 50 years ago, or just about 50 years ago. That's before you came into existence. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a nice compliment. Thank you very much. And you yes, started yeah. where? And I began teaching at Bethesda. Bethesda? Yes. I'm, I'm, That's a, Bethesda, far from town. I'm a Bethesda man. Oh, yes, so I began Bethesda. teaching at Bethesda. And then I went to the teacher's training college, came back to Bethesda, and became headmaster at the Bethesda School. Mm, so when you left yes. Antigua for the U.S., you were? I was already a trained teacher. And, and I was headmaster at All Bethesda right. School. And Mr. Lee, are you principal at the... Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 certainly not. Are you aspiring for that, though? Actually, I am not either. <laughs> but I am, I have not the longevity that Mr. Samuel has You'll at get all. you get it. I <laughs> only have 10 years. Um, but I think that is quite an accomplishment. in 10 of years? Yes, don't let the youth fool you. So 10 and 50. 60 we are years on set. 60 years. Oh, no. I taught for two That's years. Well, 62 years on set. Show <laughs> us some wonderful <laughs> love. <laughs> oh, I didn't even remember that I was a teacher so long ago. It's been a while. Having taught in the U.S., what are some of the commonalities between teaching in the U.S. and teaching in Antigua? Well, <coughs> first of all, when I went to the U.S. to teach, after I had left Antigua, mm -hmm. Antigua's education system was very much different from it is today. Okay. We had one of the best education systems, as far as I'm concerned, not only just in Antigua, but in the world. Mm. And we could prove that cause each time our people went to either England, Europe, or to the United States, or to Canada, they excelled immediately because the standards were high and we could meet any standard anywhere else in the world. So they were you excited see. to have you in Oh the yes, they, they, they love to have Caribbean students. They just mm -hmm. love to have, Car you just say you're from the Caribbean, they're willing respect. to take you. And they respected you. And our mm -hmm. professions um, demonstrated, our professionals demonstrated their capabilities in nursing, mm -hmm. in teaching. As a matter of fact, I don't know if people know that uh, what they call um, headhunters, people go around trying to mm -hmm. um, find people for employment. They come to the Caribbean to recruit both teachers and nurses. Even now. Even now. They, I remember they still a couple do that. years ago, they took a lot of our nurses. Yes. yes. yes and, and once our nurses go there, immediately. Oh, the benefits. The, the benefits. Because yeah. many of the things that we teach our nurses, yeah. they don't teach their nurses yes. there. So even though are, they may we have we a bachelor advanced. in nursing. So we, yeah. we were advanced. Uh, somehow the standards seem to have slipped. But, um, well, that's why we're here at the Paula Show tonight, because we're going to help to get it to where it ought to be. Well, we'll, t we'll have to try to find out where it went wrong. 
I think it will I, I need more time than we have tonight. Well, so yes. after the show, we'll continue to work okay. on that project. Because one of the things that you, in order to solve a problem, you have to know what the problem is. You have is. to identify it. have to identify yes, it. Yes, and so yes. uh, maybe they're trying to solve the problem. They have not identified what the problem is, so they're solving the wrong problem. Well, and that, that is why too. we can't But what succeed. are the commonalities, if there were any, um, when you started <coughs> teaching in the U.S.? Well, first of all, their whole approach to education is very different I, f from my experience. Mm -hmm. um, when you're educated in the United States, they're not just interested in you learning what the book said mm -hmm. and repeating it to them. As we always say, they want you to add knowledge. What can you do with that education? Mm -hmm. Can you do something with it? And if you can't do anything with it, then they're not really interested. You must be able to do something. It's meaningless. Mm -hmm. But we, on the other hand, we are very caught up uh, at all levels with learning what the book says, repeating it, and we consider that, that the person's educated. In schools now, we're teaching subjects. We're not teaching students. You mm. see? So our concern is how many subjects have they passed? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten. Nine, ten, twenty-one, twenty-two. Yes, so they are now very well educated. educated. They're school. They went to yes. school. But it's just a very, very different thing. And even after persons go to college, they come out. We have more degreed persons in Antigua now than we ever had in our history. And yet, we seem incapable of solving simple problems. Oh, it seems no, they can't Jesus. think outside the box. So I learned what the book said. I have a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree. And I said, go and solve the problem. And unless we can find this in the book, we're dead. <laughs> we can't do anything about it. So it brings me to the next question. Mr. Lee, are you of the view that people might have attended school for a very long time, but they're not actually educated? And then persons who might not have gone to school at all might be considered educated? Well, definitely. I mean, there is a difference between being educated and being qualified. And in many cases, we have individuals who are qualified, but not educated. Back to the degrees. Back yes. to the degrees. <laughs> I mean, the, when you look at the definition of learning, mm -hmm. learning is a change of behavior. I think many times we forget that. And it's important that we start there. If learning is a change mm -hmm. of behavior, where there is no behavioral change, learning mm -hmm. has not taken place. So what has taken place? Qualification. I mean, <laughs> I, may have, I may have the capacity to regurgitate. And just as Mr. Samuel is yes. state, stating, our system does perpetuate that. Mm -hmm. And we focus mainly on the individual who is able to regurgitate the information back to us even faster. And mm -hmm. I'll admit, sometimes even as a teacher, you, it, it makes you feel yes, as Yes, teacher's mm -hmm. pet. You learn something because you can repeat it. Right. But at the end of the day, if the individual is not really able to apply that knowledge and apply it accurately, mm -hmm. I mean, I, you can tell me back what I said in class, but then maybe when I give you a homework assignment or when it appears on the test, and sadly, that's what we're seeing now, <laughs> you can put the same question on the test and people are oblivious. Obviously, As if learning I don't has know not anything taken about that. But clearly, you're on the same page so far. I, I, However, yes. if I may interject, because Mr. Samuel seems to be of the opinion, though, that um, the, because of the, the, the teaching methods yes. of the United States, that those individuals are a bit more out of the box and you know, in the Caribbean, yes. that we seem to be a bit more confined. However, I'm not sure that I fully agree with that, yes? In the sense that our people, if they're able to top their system, if they're able to, to be the best, with all due respect, the dregs of our system, the bottom of our system, go to these institutions, especially in the United States, and they are the cream of the crop. But well, they're probably the cream we of the crop. must be doing something Regurgitating, right. but they may not be cream of the crop applying. Well, I, you, don't, know, I don't know what you mean by the, by the dregs, by the bottom, because... The ones that didn't do too well. Well, you see, that is the problem. You see, simply because the person at that time did not um, regurgitate mm -hmm. or was not able to tell you <laughs> the things that you wanted to know, you conclude that the person is not educated. The person is maybe, maybe the person is retired. Maybe there's something wrong with the person. There's nothing wrong with the person. Maybe what you're teaching them is not interested in. And that happens many times in schools. We're teaching children things that they're not interested in. And, they, and we wonder how come they're not learning it. Guys, are not you being taught it. subjects that... Yeah? And you have no interest in them? Yes. Really? Yes. So you really prefer not to do these subjects? Yes. 
Like what? History. 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 History is a brilliant subject. Who? Huh? Maths. 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 Oh, stop. You see what I well, mean? <laughs> we see, the thing is, here you have a situation where they're being taught subjects that are very interesting. In but history. how are they being taught, you see? Now, the person goes, or, or, or mathematics, and the person goes off to England or to the United like States, and this person was never good. All of a sudden, you hear the person has gone to college, and they've, because they have got the, method the has methodology changed. has changed, yes. and the interest is there. What am I going to do with this subject? What or am I going to do with this information? Of the quality of the education, so that the standard is much easier. I'm sorry, with all due respect, no, 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 it's I no, have, no. I have gone to an American school, and having taken some subjects with an American school. I mean, I found it. Easy. I found it elementary. Easy, yeah. And and that's the con that that is a continuous thought. Well, I, that I comes don't. From that, our no, no. That from comes from our you Caribbean see, students. I, they said the American system is easy, and that's why we do well. Well, you do well, but what have we produced? <laughs> what have we produced? <laughs> nothing. Okay. We produce nothing. Okay. I'm not we, sure have, we have we have a university. We have a university in the Caribbean that has been there since the 1950s. Tell me what have they produced? Well, uh, everything that you have, your I agree. cell phone, your everything, all your technology. Resources. That's where it came from. Resources. Came well, from human resources, resources. they yeah, produce human like me. Resources. You need to clap. Like yes. me. Fine. <laughs> but you can't say you can't say you can't say that, that they've invented that the anything. That your education is inferior if yeah. they're producing everything that you have. If they're giving you a cell phone, they're giving you everything you have, your motor cars, your this, your that, they're producing them. B maybe the school you went to. Is but if you understand the mm -hmm. system, you see how it works. The government of the United States puts money in education into the colleges, private colleges, public colleges. Yeah. They, in turn, support the universities where they research. That research is then sent back to the companies for them to produce to get these products out. So when you see That's these products, true. you see, whether it be military for military use or for civil civilian use, that came out of a college. That's and that true. came out of a university that the government supported. My son Again. attended NYU Polytechnic. Yes. And they actually, the, that school is responsible for Velcro, for, would you say invent? Mm, yeah. Well, I guess so, inventing Velcro. And so, so to his point, what are we producing in the Caribbean? Human resources? In fairness, though, Mrs. What? Lee, in fairness, uh -huh. that is just not an education system. What I hear in mm. that, there is a collaboration between the education system, between the private industry, uh, are, between yes, and the government. Right, and the government. Uh -huh. There are certain expectations that mm. are placed. Mm -hmm. No, I think that our education system is producing what is expected of it. Oh, it's expected failure? <laughs> That's what it's going to be? No, uh, you should expect. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't on, want that, my on that note, <laughs> we're going to take a break from the Paula show. The set is heating up. I am so loving it. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. <laughs> Tonight, the set is heating up, and we're talking about education. Education is a very important topic. Stay with us on the Paula Show. A Chinese proverb says that teachers open the door and we walk through the door. Having met a number of teachers throughout your life, which teacher, which one teacher encouraged you to open the door? Well, to it's, walk through the door. And it's, it's very interesting that you would ask that question, of course. If I may be a little bit disobedient, there were two individuals who did something of, who did something very similar. We're and I'll very give it short. I show. thank you so much for your leniency. <laughs> right? uh, both individuals ended up as education officers in Antigua and Barbuda. And who are they? The former director of education, Mrs. Jacinta Pringle, who oh. was at the time principal of the Princess Margaret School, where I went. I hail from the Princess Margaret School. <laughs> very proud. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Miss Stacy Maskell, Mrs. Stacy Maskell, who at the time was Miss Payne, she is now the education officer responsible, I think, for information technology. Oh, I know her. Short and, and very yes. nice. Yes. Now, what stood out to me about these two individuals was the fact that they went beyond what could be considered the call of duty. Mrs. Pringle was principal, 
And when I was in third form, we did not have a French teacher in the school. And religiously, I didn't appreciate it then. I'll be honest, I didn't appreciate it then. You wanted but the free time. We wanted the free time, like any good student. Yes, yes, yes. But religiously, Mrs. Pringle would show up in our class to teach French. The first term, we really didn't take her seriously. We thought, okay, what is she doing? And then we all failed the first <laughs> term. <laughs> Naughty students, right? <laughs> I mean, just wouldn't do the homework because it's like, well, what is she doing? You How know? much longer is this going to last? She's the principal, go run the school. <laughs> <laughs> but religious faithfully she would attend the class and then and so all by the second to term we began to appreciate and realize yes. okay she's not going anywhere you might as well buckle down and do yes. some work and i really began to love the subject and that stood out to me i don't remember thing in french i don't remember much in french right now but i remember anybody remembers anything in french Merci. okay but i do remember the act of selflessness yes. and the same thing for mrs Ms. Maska with yes, it with it she would she had just come to us at the princess margaret school coming straight out of antigua state college mm -hmm. and she was not as verse with the practical aspect because in antigua state college you mainly did programming yes yes and at that time princess margaret was the only secondary school that was offering information technology at the cxc level so she came and night after night, not day, night after she night, prepared you guys. we were at school sometimes up to 10 o'clock the night and she was there with us trying Aww. to figure out our SBA so that we could pass. Okay. Nobody paid her for that. The truth is I never said this to her personally, so I'm hoping that they are watching, but thank you, especially on behalf of the past students of the Princess Margaret School, mm -hmm. class of 1999. Oh, that was a long time <laughs> no, ago. No, 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 that was, that was <laughs> the other day. <laughs> and you, who, who, who would have impacted you? Father Brown. Fa he died? Yes. Um, okay. well, wouldn't wonderful. you think so? <laughs> no, the way he uh, said, Father Brown, it sounded like past tense, and yes. not present tense. Father Brown was a very meticulous person. Yes. When it came to his pedagogy, mm -hmm. he taught English language, mm. and he usually taught fourth and fifth form. When you were finished fourth form, and you got to fifth form, you could not, literally, could not make a grammatical mistake oh at boy. any time for any reason. Mm. He had taught you, and you couldn't make a mistake. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to. Perfect. Not only that, Pedantic. he was very meticulous when it came to time. I remember this one incident, I'll just make it short. Mm -hmm. We had to go up to him after school for some work. And he said, come at seven. And uh, we were walking up to grammar mm -hmm. school, you know, the BBC was going off. 23 hours Greenwich being time mm -hmm. and we were practically at his door and then we knocked on his door and he didn't answer and we knocked and we said no this is not like father Brown he would never he, he, he just would never leave us stranded the next day when we went to school we told him but we came he said yes I know and um, we said but you didn't answer he said when I say seven I mean seven <laughs> 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 oh Lord, Father Brown would not have liked me. No, not at all. Not at when all. When he rang that bell, he rang it for 30 seconds. And if you're not sitting in your seat, when the bell stops, you're late. Oh. I'm not sure that Father Brown would have been able to enjoy our education. I am sure today. not. I am sure not. Well, but in those days, grammar school was a super school, so. Mm. It's not, no? No. I will not comment. <laughs> <laughs> let him let him make the comment. But, but 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 let me say this. Yes. I just want to. Um, I wouldn't want you to leave this point, which we left sort of hanging. Um, when you said education is one of the ways, I think you said uh, towards our progress. Words of that. I'm 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 coming to that later in the segment. You see, I I think that we have to believe, and I know that we do not believe that education is the key. It is not a key. It is the key, the only key to our success. Every nation on earth, whenever they master technology, they master the world, they master their neighbors, they invaded them, they conquered them, they were in charge. Okay. The moment that they lost track of their education, allowed it to go, people were able to come in and conquer them. You cannot, as a nation, and 
I'm just using nation loosely mm -hmm. because Antigua is not a nation. We cannot, if we want to be a nation, <laughs> progress, do anything, unless we have an educated population. I don't mean a schooled population. And educated, educated, skilled people who can do things. Because even if they gave you technology, if the Chinese gave us to the American skin, say, here, here's technology. And what we are you don't going to know do with to it? apply it. We don't we, we, we That is why I started it. by saying Nelson Mandela says education is the weapon that can help you to change the world. Do we get a clap for Nelson Mandela? Are we expecting too much from our teachers? Do we overwhelm our educators by making a lot of demands and they're not able to facilitate? But of course. We overwhelm you guys? Oh, yes. You, 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 you think that you have been asked to do too much? I think so. And of course, Mr. Samuel spoke about the fact that he was an educator in a different era. And I think 50 those, years ago. those wow. things... The, the, the tenets of society and the makeup of society being vastly different is what accounts for some of the sense of being overwhelmed today. As, a, as an educator, I am not only an educator. In many instances, I am probably the only disciplinarian in that child's life. Whereas before, the school used to have a partnership with the home. That is almost non-existent today. And so there are many other things that are required of me as an educator that really was not required before. Not that educators weren't disciplinarians before. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But whereas before, an educator could easily call home and say, Mrs. Lee, I'm having an issue with your, with your son. This is what is happening. And know that Mrs. Lee will deal with it accordingly. So the next time he, come, he returns to school, he is in line. In may, many may, may, may well, maybe I'm, may, maybe may, may I'm a parent here. 50 years ago because may, I do that. But may yes, but you are here. the minority. When, okay. we, when we taught, I didn't call home. You because, did what you had to do. Because the child didn't want me to call home. Because <laughs> if he ever called home, if I ever told his parents what he was doing, he would, he would pray that the earth would But no, when you call home, him. the parents are dealing with you. You see, we have to begin by understanding that that child, if you have any parents in here, we have any parents in here? Yes, yes, several. That child is not just your child. We got to get away from this thing of Fumi Pickney. No, sir, no, ma'am. It's everybody's That child, child belongs to us. We pay the teachers to teach them. We pay to, 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 to give them recreation. We provide all that. And if they go astray, we have to pay the police to go and pick them up. Mm -hmm. So Very it's true. all the court, our responsibility. They belong to us, all of us. I like that. I you like see. that. So I so should be able to, to discipline them. Sure, because we have to believe in in parentis loci, mm -hmm. where the teacher is the parent. The ch child goes off, the parents gone to work, and but the child is the teacher. But there are some teachers who do not want that responsibility. Well, they, they only teach for a salary. Mm -hmm. so you're going to always have that. Uh -huh. You're going to yeah, always yeah. have that. I mean, but in every profession, you're going to have you're some gonna have that. Yes? You're going to have that. And that is But it seems to be mm. in the majority now as opposed to 50 well, you years see, ago. No, you see, one of the things that has happened is that the parents now are saying, a for me picnic. This so is so my child. Off. Of so course. the teacher said, well, it's your child. Yeah. So if anything happens, go home to your parents. You tell your parents. You deal with it. Because once the teacher tries to deal with it. isn't that a little bit immature? No, it isn't. No, no, no. That's a reality. In many instances, it is also That's for reality. safety. For your safety? For my safety. Yes. Who's safety. going to harm you? Who is wow. going to the harm parents? you? The <laughs> parents. Are parents You're harming teachers? Yes. Really? Yes. I, 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 so you keep yes. these incidents secret because I'm not hearing about that. You the you media doesn't about report them? about that. It may not. I mean, for instance, and it may not have become confrontational to the point that it became fit fights. But definitely when you have been verbally abused and you have been threatened, you take your hands off. That's enough. I'm not going to wait for you to burst my head so open. So you teach the child. But there's a hands-off attitude. Yes. I don't know how that works. Well, that's why it's not working. But I would just want to interject, though. That's only one. That's only one issue why we feel overwhelmed. I could go on. 
Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to go on in the next segment. I tell you, it's heating up on the Polish show. When I taught many years ago, it was so much easier. I pray for our teachers tonight. Please do. May God bless you. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. <laughs>